Hi, I'm Mary from the Maryland Room, and this is a Frederick County Public Library's Genealogy Moment. Today, I'd like to talk about a source that is Frederick County specific. Now, don't go running off if you don't have Frederick County family, because are you sure you don't have Frederick County family? If you had people on the East Coast, or if you had people who came through Philadelphia, or if you had people who headed south and into the mountains, um, down the Appalachian Trail or into Missouri, into Arkansas, and they did that in the 17th or 18th century, the odds are good that they may have come through Frederick County. We see that all the time where people got transferred back to Frederick County or moved to Frederick County and start to do their genealogy and may have grown up in California or Oklahoma or somewhere in the South or the Midwest and not realize that they had Frederick County family. They start doing their research and then we get back to 1760, 1740, and look, lo and behold, there they are in Frederick County. So um, stick with me for a little while, if you would. The source I'd like to talk about today is something called a Genealogical Index to Frederick County, Maryland. The subtitle is The First Hundred Years. It's a work that was done by a gentleman named Jan John Stanwood Martin. Mr. Martin was a genealogist who did have some Frederick County family, and he based his study on a work that was done in New England. And what Mr. Martin did was he went through over 120 sources and created an index to their indexes. It's one of those crazy, crazy things that only a genealogist would do. Um, thankfully, they do such crazy things because it keeps me with a job and it keeps us with sources that all sorts of genealogists and also historians can utilize. Uh, Mr. Martin's work looks a lot like this. Um, there's, as you can see in this image right here, it's a four volume work. They're big, fat books. And the insides look like this. And what, again, what he did was he went through these sources and created indexes to indexes. So it is not necessarily a narrative. It's not at all a narrative. It doesn't have a lot of beefy information in and of itself. It is an index. What that means is that indexes are pointers. So it's pointing you to other sources. So he's referencing particular people. He breaks the people down into surname and then into generation. And he's again dealing with the first hundred years of Frederick County history. So around the break between Prince George and Frederick, so the 1740s. And then he says the first hundred years, but actually the people in his volumes actually go post Civil War. So it's the first hundred years plus a little. And he went through these sources and he did not evaluate these sources. He did not go in to try to prove or disprove anything. Um, that would have taken years upon years. As it is, it took him five years to do this. And he ended up with over 200,000 references and he tracks over 61,000 individuals. And what it allows us to do, it's a very good starting point. It allows us to just sort of hand over volumes to people and they can take a look and see if they have referenced, if they have touched upon these 120 plus different types of sources. And a lot of these sources are themselves indexes, the sorts of indexes and abstracts and transcriptions which genealogists utilize and, and make use of and also produce over the years, indexes to different types of records. Also, he does touch upon periodicals that have genealogical content. He also touches upon some original records. And also he touches upon letters, letters that he had when he was work, doing his work that he received or wrote to other genealogists. Not a lot of letters, but some letters at all. So it really cuts across a broad spectrum of genealogical information. He did this in 1992, and then he reprinted it in 1999. It is not an update. He did not make any changes. He just reprinted it. And you're not going to find this in a lot of libraries. It's a relatively unique item. We have two copies in the Maryland, which we are very greedily proud of. And you will find them in other institutions as well, but you won't find them in every library across the planet that does Frederick County genealogy. So again, he went through these sources. He took the information he found and he compiled it into, into buckets of information. First, he broke down the buckets by surname, and then within the surnames, he broke down the buckets by generation, and he used about a 30-year break. So when you take a look at Martin's, um, it's full of, of generational breakdowns, which can be sort of daunting at first, and then funny little codes, which can be even more daunting. Those funny little codes send you to those other items, and again, 
it's just an index. It's pointers to those other sorts of things. So we utilize Martins almost every day in the Maryland room. And it is not only an excellent source for people just starting their Frederick County genealogy, but it's also good if you've been doing genealogy for 20 years. It's a good way to step back and to see if you've used these 120 sources. And while most of these are other indexes and abstracts and transcriptions and are some periodicals and some published documents, there are also, again, letters. So there may be things that you're not going to see anywhere else. Not lots of letters, but some of them. And we are actually fortunate enough to have his manuscript collection as well, which is not very large. But so we do occasionally have whatever letters he's referencing um, in this volume. We do not have all the books and all the sources that he references, but we have the major ones. And then, of course, because we are librarians, we often have ways to get you to those other sources, even if we don't have them, if there's something um, more obscure or something that deals with an area outside of Frederick County. Now, also, don't forget, because he is doing the first hundred years of Frederick County history, give or take, um, Frederick County at the beginning was much bigger than it is today. So it may be a genealogical index to Frederick County. It's actually a genealogical index to Frederick County as it existed when it was also Carroll County, Montgomery County, Washington County, Garrett County, Allegheny County, and up until the point that those counties broke off. So really for West and Montgomery County up to 1776, for Carroll County up until the 1830s. So it's an excellent starting point. It's an excellent way to step back and to make sure you've seen these sources. Now, lots of sources have come out since Martin did his work since 1992. But still, it's an excellent, excellent place to take a look at and to really see where you stand in regard to utilizing these other sources. So kind of a breakdown for Martin's genealogical index to Frederick County, or as we call it, Martin's. So if you come in the Maryland site, I'd like to look at Martin's. Um, we know what you're referencing. So if you really want to kind of be in the know, we call it Martin's. So again, it deals with historic Frederick County. So it's picking up references to genealogical material about individuals who lived in historic Frederick County, so Frederick County as it is today, into Carroll County, and up to 1776. It will also include Washington County, Garrett County, Allegheny County, and also Montgomery County. Don't forget that was all Frederick County at the time of its formation. So it's dealing with 100, the historic Frederick County, covering the first 100 years. So again, 1740s to really post-Civil War, which is certainly more than 100 years, but around that time period. Again, 200,000 different references and covering over 61,000 people. So that's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of, a lot of stuff. And he dealt with over 120 different sources. And again, it's an index. It's, he's not proving whether or not something's right or wrong. He's not entering into that conversation. He just went through all these other sources, pulled the information out of most, a lot of those are indexes themselves, pulled them out of the indexes and created a much large one-stop shopping index. So if you had people in Frederick County during that time period, or you're not sure, or you had people who came through Frederick County going somewhere else or came into Philadelphia, and you know they came across Pennsylvania, and then you don't know what happened to them until they magically appeared in California, it's worth consulting Martin's Genealogical Index to Frederick County. Martin's is not available online um, the, during, the, during the pandemic. You can access the information in Martin's by emailing us at mdroom at fcpl.org and um, giving us enough time. We can scan those pages and get those out to you. And then depending upon which entries you are um, interested in, we then can scan those materials and get those out to you or guide you in regards to where you might be able to obtain that information. Also, Martins is really good about pulling together um, different spellings. So, you know, we view, I think, I'm sure we've talked about the fact that anything being spelled one way is our world. It's not the world of the 19th century or the 18th century or certainly not before then. So what he did when he went through these different indexes and abstracts and books and documents is he tried to pull together all the variant spellings together. So again, one-stop shopping. And although he breaks it out into surnames and then into generational buckets, keep in mind that just because those people were in the same generation, it doesn't mean they actually knew each other. They could be related. They don't have to be related. Could be they wouldn't have known each other on the streets. He's just putting all that information into certain buckets for access. Now, if your people were enslaved during that time period, it's unlikely that you're going to find any information in Martins just because of the sorts of records that were created at that time that would have documented enslaved people. And also um, the fact that there just weren't the right type of records, the sorts of records that are included in here 
wouldn't normally document it in slave people. That said, if you do have surnames for that time period, we still should look. And if you know who the owners were, we definitely should look. Um, because again, when you get back to, um, to enslavement, if you know who the owners are, that is another avenue for research and something that you really need to do to pick up a wills and land records where you may find references to your people. So again, if you had people in Frederick County or in Frederick County in the area and think historic Frederick County, um, Civil War back, Martin's genealogical index is an excellent starting point. And even if you've been doing genealogy for 30 years, it's an excellent thing to take a look at to confirm that you've seen these sources and not only that you've seen these sources but that you've interpreted these sources the same way that martin has interpreted these sources because um, we all can look at names and read them differently so there may be some document where another book that you looked at didn't read the name the way you thought it should be and you didn't catch it and it's being caught in martin's so always look so again you had people in frederick county civil war back Martin's Genealogical Index to Frederick County is a source that at some point in time you should interface with. Um, not available online right now because the mailroom is still closed to the public. You can gain access to the informational content from it by emailing us at mdroom at fcpl.org. Also, one final thing. If your family is not in Martins, it doesn't necessarily mean that they weren't here. Some families walked very light on the land. It all has to do with the sorts of records that are being indexed. So even if your family is not in Martins, it doesn't mean they weren't here. This isn't our last avenue for research for determining whether or not your people um, were here or not. It's just the best starting point. Um, thank you so much for being here with me today. And particularly if you don't think you have Frederick County people, thanks for sticking with me for these 11 minutes and 21 seconds. Um, see you next time. And don't forget mdroom at fcpl.org. We're always there for you. Let us know how we can help you, whether or not you have Frederick people or not. We are there to serve you wherever you are on your genealogical journey. Thank you. Bye-bye.